Welcome to Chris Vivi journey. So today, this is not about Vivi, this is about Palm. So the news broke, DC Comics won't be released on the Vivi app, but they release it on their own Palm blockchain platform nft.dcuniverse.com. And tomorrow we will have the first release with Superman number one from 1938, uh, 1939, sorry. So uh, yeah, there's a lot to talk about. I, I'm committed to have these videos now at a 12 to 50 minute range, but this won't be possible in this one. I need to get deep into the subject matter of Superman one. It's just too important. So it might take a little bit longer, but I hope you enjoy the ride. Uh, yeah, let's go. Here we are. This is the medium article from DC NFT news. Um, and prominently on the front, you can see it. Superman number one, uh, which I have a facsimile coming in very soon. I only uh, already pre-ordered it. So yeah, <laughs> I will have at least that one. Um, okay. So the news is interesting. DC will do weekly drops with, um, two types of comic NFTs. They will do modern comic NFTs that will have five rarities. The rarities are common, uncommon, rare, epic or legendary with epic and legendary being like ultra rare and secret rare on the VV app. And they will also have legacy comics. So that will be the old comic ones like golden age, bronze age, I guess all this stuff, maybe not bronze age, but golden age, silver age comics, that type of stuff. So they will also have the same rarities. The difference is that the modern comic books will have variant covers, while the legacy comic books, they will have gradings. So if you get a, like in tomorrow's drop, you get the Superman, you're super lucky and get a Superman comic and you have to come in, then you will get something like a 1.5 CGC graded book. So that it looks faded, that it looks banged up, um, if you get a rare one that will look well, quite good and the legendary will look like it's in pristine condition. So that's an interesting take. Um, I don't know how to take that. Like on one way, yeah, it's kind of nice. On the other hand, it's like, that was one of the good things of having an NFT that you have like something in perfect condition. No, they take that away unless you get the legendary. That's that, that's that's a weird take. I don't know. <laughs> I I kind of like the idea. Like if I if I uh, take it in comparison with VV comics, I wouldn't like to have these black and white variants. I I don't like them. So that is better than that. But I don't know. Maybe maybe a variant would would be better. I have no idea. Like I have to see it. I don't know. But at this point, hard to decide what I like about it. So, um, it is going to be a readable comic. Uh, it will have, it will have a price of $9.99. So that's, that's cheap. The problem is getting one because there will only be 3000 pieces that can be minted. And we have no idea if these 3000 pieces, um, will all be open to the public. Like. Again, if you think about VV, they always keep some for the companies and for themselves. So we don't know if that's the case here. Um, also, the news broke that today is uh, they made the Batman Legacy Cowl comic also readable. Um, so if you're a Bat Cowl holder and got this thing airdropped, now it is a comic and is in that case the first readable comic experience on the blockchain from DC Comics. And we go deeper into that matter why I specifically worded it this way. But we come to it. So, um, yeah, we will talk about the, the other stuff a little bit later. Let's talk about the book itself first. So, Superman 1 is like the, I'd say, the second most important western comic book ever created 
the most important one, in my opinion, Action Comics 1. Because that was the first appearance of Superman and started the whole superhero genre in the Western world. Um, every superhero you know from, the, from, from TV and video games, like it, it was started there. Um, one year later, but, but Action Comics, the thing with Action Comic was it has different characters in it. It wasn't like Action Comics started with Superman. Superman was in issue one, but he didn't stay. Like they used different ideas, different stories with different characters. But because Superman was so beloved by everyone, that's why they started to make the Superman comics. And there's like a 1.0 here, you can see on the screen. So when this started, this was like the first run of a single character comic book. And that's why it's the second most important comic book in the world, in my opinion. I mean, the numbers, the numbers back me up, to be honest. <laughs> the numbers totally back me up. But, you know, I, I, I want to say it stays safe. So I say, in my opinion. Um, yeah, the thing with this comic book, it is yellow. It wasn't printed on the best paper. So getting something in a good condition is really hard. And here's a table of the CGC census, how many books there are. And this is tough. So the first number says how many universal books you have, like a standard comic book. The second is the qualified. Qualified is a book that is like in good condition, but for whatever reason, it's not in perfect condition. Like it's it's not a flaw. It's like there, there's, I don't know, a page missing or whatever. This is specifically mentioned on the on the label. Um, then you have the signature series. I don't know. I, I don't think there's anything in signature. Nobody ever let anyone sign on the books. The restored ones, those are interesting. Like the restored ones, they get a purple label and restored means someone went on the book with, with pencil, pens, colors, whatever, and restored the book. That is a nice idea, but it most likely takes away from the, from the worth of the book, from the value. So that means if you look at the universal books, we have no 9.8s, no 9.6. We have a restored one that is a 9.6. We have no 9.5s, no 9.2s, no 9.0s, except for one restored one again. We have one 8.5 and two 8.5 restored. We have one 8.0 and four restored 8.0s. 1, 7.5, 2, 7.0, no 6.5, 2, 6.0, 3, 5.5, and 4, 5.0 grades. Like, that's nothing. In universal grades, that means we have uh, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. We have 14 books from 5.0 to 8.5. And then you have, like... I don't know, I, I guess like 40, 30 or 40 books below that. So this book, for one thing, really, really hard to get in good condition, almost impossible to get in good condition. And there isn't many at all. Even if you take the restored ones into consideration, that's still like, I guess, less than 100 books, way less than 100 books. So what does it mean for the prices? That's, that's a good one. So let's look at recent sales for this book. Oh, where's the recent sales? Ah, I had the recent sales. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Um, oh, what happened? Ay, 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 ay. So excuse me, I was a little lost there. <laughs> so here's some books that have been sold in the past. So in May 2022, a 5.0 was sold for $720,000. Uh, the same grade, three years earlier in 2019, was sold for $450,000. So that really went up in price. Um, you had a 1.5 that sold just June of this year. 1.5, like this is a really, really low grade. 
That sold for $190,000. And now you can compare to the restored books. This is a restored one. It's a 6.0. And in 2020, it sold for 144,000. So the 6.0 in 2020 went for 140,000, while the 5.0, a whole grade lower, or better yet, two grades lower, sold for more than like the, the more than three times that amount. So the restored ones really lose value, but I mean, at the end of the day, they're really nice to look at. So it does have value. I, I, I'm not taking away the value. And even this year, a 7.0 restored one only sold for 96,000. I mean, only <laughs> sold for 96,000. That's quite a bunch. But if you compare a 7.0, 90,000, while the 1.5 went for 190,000. That's, that's, that's a lot to say against having the restored ones. Still great. But as you can see on these prices, no regular guy can, can afford this book in any way. Like you, you can buy the facsimile like I bought for a few bucks. But if you want to have the original, like you need to have 100k. I guess to, yeah, today I don't think you can, you can get one below 100k currently. Maybe 50 if you get the 0.5 or whatever, restored 0.5. Maybe that goes for, for that amount. I don't know, but this is like astronomical prices. And if you want to know what's the record, the record was set in April of this year for $5.3 million for an 8.0 copy of this book. <laughs> Let that sink in. 5.3 million dollars and there's even a difference because if you buy from an auction house like heritage here um a big chunk of the money actually goes to the to the auction house so these prices don't reflect the real value like it's not the value you would get in your pocket because of the high fees while this was a private sale between private people. So that was 5.3 million. I don't know. <laughs> as long as there was no money laundering involved, that means they really paid 5.3 million for this book. It's a mile high copy. That means it's it has some kind of prestige become because it comes from a great collection. But that is still a crazy amount of money. <laughs> really. Like a few weeks before... Um, Amazing Fantasy 15 sold for 3.5 million, something with 3 million. And for a short amount of time, it was the most expensive comic book. Then this one sold for 5.3 million and it established Superman as the, the one. <laughs> He's the one you want to have. Like this is crazy. And this book, even back in the day, with the success of Action Comics 1, this book sold out instantly. Like it was the same like today. It was sold out instantly. And this is just amazing to see. Um, yeah, so so that's the importance of the real book. That's the importance of the physical, the real deal. Like I always say the same thing. I would be happy just to get near this book. Like I, I don't even have to own it. But if I ever get in a situation, because I'm in Germany, we don't we don't have these these comic cons where, where where these books are there. So if I ever get the experience to just be near of a real copy of this book, that would be an amazing experience for me. Just to see a real copy with my own eyes, a physical copy, that would be so that would be amazing. I hope I hope I have to <laughs> I'll be lucky one day to to be close to one of those books. That's crazy. Now with the NFT, remember, 3000 pieces, 5 rarities, 9.99 dollars. So, but there was also an FAQ and that made me think about a few things. So, how many rarities are available for Superman 1? And if I stutter a bit, be kind. It's it's almost uh midnight here it's really late for me already 
So, um, there will only be 150 legendary ones, only 300 epics, 450 rares, 900 commons, and 1200, uh, 900 uncommons, and 1200 common books. And honestly, I'd be super fine if I if I would get a common. That would be such a success because 3000 pieces on VV, I have no chance to get a drop with 3k editions. Unless it is something nobody wants. This is something I, I have no idea how many people will register within the next day. Just to be part of this drop. That would be crazy. I'm so sure their website will crash. This would be a massacre. So that's one thing. Um, what is the first DC collectible comic on the blockchain? That they they even mentioned it. This will be Batman the Legacy Cowl Chapter 1. That's the exclusive one for the Bat Cowl holders. That has risen in price tremendously. I'll show you later. Oh, we can take a quick look now. So the book a day ago was at sixty dollars. Now it was at forty, and sooner today it was at sixty. Now it is at a hundred and twenty. So that got quite a boost. But buying now is like maybe not the smartest idea. It's hot right now. Okay, so let's get back to the FAQ. Um, can I read my DC collectible comics? Now here it gets really interesting. DC collectible comics are readable through nft.universe.com. In your collection page, click on the card showing the collectible comic you want to read in order to go to the collectible detail page. Then click the read now button. Your DC collectible comic can only be read in DC collectible comics reader on nft.universe.com. They are not compatible with other DC comic online readers. So this is where it starts to get interesting. Um, what does that mean in the future in the context of having an NFT? Um, so does that mean as soon as nft.universe.com becomes obsolete, my book is gone because there's no way to read it anymore. And it doesn't stop there. It, it gets even more interesting. So, uh, how rare is my collectible comic? What was that? Um, yeah, that, that's just the description of the rarity. Like I told you, if you have a common one, it will be quite banged up. Where can I access my DC collectible comic? I mean, it says it's your collectible comics, right? But the thing is, you the users can access their collectibles on nft.universe.com under the My Collection tab, but that is not what I was referring to. Um, what is a DC collectible comic? Now, that is, that is the super interesting one, the last one. That is quite concerning, in my opinion. A DC collectible comic is an NFT minted on the Palm blockchain that gives the holder access to a fully readable digital comic book. Now this is really, that is a small distinction, but I feel this is a very, very important distinction. Because the thing is, if, if I look at the, if I take a comparison to Vivi, and I, I don't like to do the comparison to Vivi all the time, but that is the big one that has all the Marvel comic books. Now, if I have a Marvel comic book on Vivi, I can read it in the app. I can read it on their website. So that's easier access. Now, we don't know if we ever be able to take that out of the app. Granted. Um, what we do have is an AR version, which seems to be something like a 3D piece that most likely you will be able to transfer into the metaverse. So it's somewhat like you have something there, like you actually own something. Um, the wording here, and that's the same wording that was used here at some point. Um, uh, I don't know if I can see it here. A DC collectible comic is an NFT minted on the Palm blockchain that gives the holder access to a fully readable digital comic book. So see, um, 
The website is called nft.dcuniverse.com. There's also a website called dcuniverse.com. I can't access that for here from Germany. I would need a VPN, a good one, to access it. And on there, you pay a monthly fee. And for the monthly fee, you get access. You get access to a whole lot of books, like a whole library of DC comic books. Now, the thing that I have to ask myself is where's the difference between the NFT that grants me access to these comic books and like the subscription service that grants me access to the comic books? Because if it's just access to the comic books, then I don't own the NFT. I own the NFT that can be used as the key to get access to the, to the, to the comic book. To read the comic book but in this case it would be more like i don't know renting a movie or buying a movie on amazon it's not like you own the movie you own the right to access it on the platform and i don't know that's that is that bothers me a bit honestly that's something that is different for me in my opinion like if you look at the vv one so i was in the drop today um, actually got the ultra rare. That was why I even went for the drop. So, and the thing is, now I got the comic book here and I downloaded it to read it and I can turn off my, my Wi-Fi. Now you can see it says no Wi-Fi uh, connection, but that doesn't stop me from actually reading the book. Like I can still read it because it is saved on the app. Of course, that is not that is not the biggest distinction here, but it is a distinction. It is like it does feel like I own this thing. That's quite a difference. I mean, there, there's still a lot of way, ways to go to make it something that you actually own, but that's a fine distinction and it makes, I have to say, it makes a big difference in my opinion. I do think this is a big difference. That gives me the feeling that I own this thing instead of just having an NFT that grants me access to a readable comic book. Basically, I'm not even sure if you're not actually accessing the dcuniverse.com webpage. Like, I, am I reading the exact same thing that everyone is reading that has just a subscription service? Is it the same library? I think that makes a difference. In my opinion, that makes a big difference. Or does my NFT say I actually own a file? Like that's what's happening on Vivi. You own a file. Like if, if you have an NFT, an NFT is never a 3D object. It's almost never an image. It's just a contract. The contract says this is what you own. On Vivi, it supposedly says you own this file. Like this file, this access file, we can change the file, but this is the file you own. And with with this one, this sounds to, to me, it sounds like you own a file, but this file is not the comic book. It just grants you access to a readable digital comic. That would be a, I hope this gets cleared up at some point. I haven't spent time on the Discord today. I was too busy, but that would have been very, would be very important to me to get a, like, 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 find out what's the detail here. The devil is in the details. I want to know, <laughs> right? Um, yeah. So back to the browser. So for everyone that is still interested and <laughs> wants to participate, it's pretty easy, actually. It's pretty straightforward thing. Um, if you're not a member, you go to sign up and you tell them your birth date. So let's say 08, 26. 1988. That's not my birthday. Like, don't don't bother. So uh, then you enter your email address, come out, make up a username. You never use it again. Funny enough, uh, you need to have the password. Then you accept the uh, terms and conditions and the Warner Media Affiliates updates thing. That actually you, you don't need to do that. You only need the first one. Uh, agree that you're a human being. Click continue. Then you get a email to your email account that you uh, entered here 
need to uh, verify that it, this is you, then you have your account. And when you have your account, let me show you what happens then. So this way you end up when you uh, enter, when you, you when you have your account, like in your, if you, if you don't own anything, if you just made up a new account, you don't have anything in your collection. Um, I only have this piece left. This was the free one from the Fandom event. Um, I also had a Harley Quinn one and I had the common Batman um, disc. Sloppy disc. <laughs> I had both of those. I sold them to have the money to get for the drop tomorrow. So um, you can go to account details. First thing you should do is identify identify identity verify verification. Damn, that's a hard one. <laughs> identity verification. Do that first. It usually just takes minutes. Like you need your your passport, and that was pretty straightforward, pretty easy and fast. I I've done it two times now for me and my wife. It was easy, so that's why it says completed. Um, after that, you get uh, you can participate in the marketplace. I'm not 100% sure if you needed to put money in the bank and buy in the marketplace, but you definitely need to verify uh, if you want to sell something on the marketplace. Like you, you can try not to do it, but it just takes a few minutes. I mean, why take any chances, right? I, I would just verify. So um, as you can see, I got $12 in my account, which I mean, I got it from free NFTs. I'm not mad here, just in case for tomorrow. So if you want to add credits, the bad thing is um, there's only credit card. The good thing is you don't have to bother with the with the Palm blockchain and their own tokens. Like that is a mess. I hate it. I, I haven't looked into it for like eight months or whatever. Maybe they changed something. But the first time I was trying to do something on the Palm chain, it was such a mess. It was so expensive. Like I wanted to buy an NFT for 50 bucks and because of fees and all the stuff, it would have costed 250 bucks. That was crazy. Um, so the good thing is, if you if you use it, use the DC website here, you can do it by credit card. But <laughs> you can only use credit card. No PayPal, no wire transfer, nothing. You need a credit card. That's kind of a turn off. I use a um, debit card for that that should work i'm not 100 sure if it works but it should work i guess um yeah and i would like if you really want to go for this drop i wouldn't try to add the funds during the drop like that sounds to be, like i'm so sure the website will crash and all so i would totally try and uh put these ten dollars in beforehand and then go for the drop i have no idea how it works like they have a few collections already but um the only collection that was for sale was the bad cow collection i didn't participate in that one so i can tell how it works um and and this this didn't sell out like in seconds this was available for days um the superman one will sell out instantly maybe not maybe the website crashes and then you have to go for the rebounds that that's that's a possibility all the other collections here were free ones or you got it because you were visiting the cinema like the batman collection here um so we don't have much info on that um yeah that's pretty much it that's all you needed to know about it pretty straightforward be there on drop time and i suspect if you're there on drop time you will need to refresh the page. Pretty sure about that, that you would need to refresh the page, but I'm not 100% sure. I don't know, like I expect the website to crash. I expect bot attacks. I expect everything on that one. Uh, I don't expect at all to actually get one. Um, 3K editions, there, there's a lot of time that, that you lose because you're in Germany and like we don't even have the best internet anyways. So this will be a tough one, pretty sure this will be a tough one, but I'll try my best um, to get a chance. <laughs> I mean, I have to, at least I have to try. This is like, for me, I'm a huge, and I mean, huge Superman fan. <laughs> like, really, this is my most favorite comic character. Um, Superman, Spider-Man, I would say, and man, Superman still is Spider-Man really 
I don't know, the modern Spider-Man is not so much, but Superman was always the guy. And yeah, the current comics are awesome. Um, Warworld, the Warworld saga. Look out for that comic. That is great. Um, yeah, but, but that would be so awesome to own it, but I don't see it happening. And I think the aftermarket prices will be crazy. And then after that, the aftermarket prices will be determined by what it actually is. Like if you find out it is an actual comic and you own the comic, that would be one thing. If at one point we find out it only grants access to a library, then it's no longer great. So I don't know. If there's much money to make, I would consider to flip it at some point. Um, I don't know, uh, but I would more more likely keep my ear close to the Discord and everything to find out is it an actual comic book or not. Maybe it was already addressed and I don't know about it, but yeah, that's I think it's super important. So 30 minutes long enough. I took quite a lot of your time. I hope you found this um, helpful in any type of way. Um, please leave a like, that would be nice. Also, let me know in the comments, like speak to me guys. Do you go for this drop? Do you think this is important? Do you think I, I misinterpret the way they worded it? Do you think it makes a difference? Or do you agree that the way it's worded in Vivi sounds way more convincing that you own a comic book uh, as it does here on their website? Like it does sound so much like just granted access to a comic book on a library. Like that's, I think it's a big difference. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, what do you think what the price in the aftermarket will be? Like I have no idea, no idea if you have to pay like a hundred bucks for a common or if you have to go all in and the common already goes for 500 or 1k or whatever. I expect crazy prices, especially for the for the legendary ones but also um you don't really have mint numbers here like this works pretty different and even if you have mint numbers mint numbers they're super rare uh, super random um so that means i guess every copy is just like the next copy that's quite a bit dif different to vv where i think that mint numbers are super important yeah so but yeah i i I already told you, I don't want to take too much time away. Like I said, leave a like, uh, leave a subscribe. That would be super awesome. And yeah, talk to me. See you guys for the next news. Bye bye.